Hey everyone, it's Book Crazy Katie, and today's video is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone reaction and Croppy with Orange Peel and Glaze cooking video. Please find me on social media at the following. Thank you. Hey everyone, it's Book Crazy Katie, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and also cook fish for the first time. I am hoping to make some croppy with some orange peel and hopefully make a glaze to serve every day and then I'm just gonna I bought some quick five minute or probably less than five minute microwavable rice stuff but I never got to you guys with the last part of um Harry Potter and the Sorcery Stone chapter reaction so I want to you know quickly wrap up like my thoughts on the end of the book which I actually really like the end of this book. It's kind of weird that there were centaurs in the book considering we're dealing with mostly witches and stuff but maybe that's why they left them out of the movie. But the thing I didn't like about that is there's like this like hint at a prophecy concerning Harry Potter and I wanted to know more about that and things were left very vague but it looked like Harry Potter was predicted to die or like things weren't looking good for him in the fight against um, Voldemort and here's Harry Potter in the Sorcerer's Stone for you guys to see and it didn't look like things were going too well for him I remember like throughout the book not liking Professor Snape and it seemed like he was very obvious and I wondered if that was gonna end up being a whole like surprise it's not Professor Snape it's somebody else and when it did come down to it I ended up suspecting Professor McGonagall, Coral, and Filch Curl was at the top of my list and then Professor McGonagall and so like I did enjoy that um it was interesting that like Voldemort pretty much took over or shared Curl's body with him and then um ended up just you know ended up making Coral a little power hungry and so there's that whole issue. I liked how at the very end Neville ended up getting a bunch of um ended up getting some points for his bravery. I really like that aspect. And I was looking forward to seeing more of him and hopefully I do. I'm like a little over a hundred pages in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban right now. And so like I felt like Chamber of Secrets didn't have too much of Neville in it and I'd like to see more of him and I'd like to see his character grow and maybe become more um, courageous as the books continue. Um, I wish like the fact that Harry Potter's scar like caused Coral to have pain seemed to make Voldemort react to it pretty badly was the side effect and was more of like Harry Potter's like powers that caused it versus like his mother's love for him had caused that to happen but you know the story's okay like that I like the fact that like I think I talked about like liking Hagrid quite a bit and just saying like how he was uh, very talkative and accidentally gave things away. It really happens uh, in the last few sections. This is chapters 15 through 17. But it turns out that when Hagrid had won the game that allowed him to acquire the egg for Norbert, the dragon's egg, he had told too many secrets about how to tame or calm down Fluffy and I like the whole scene of like Harry, Ron, and Hermione um, getting into, you know, getting past Fluffy and going after Quirrell and stuff and I wish, I watched the movie like a day or two after I finished reading the book and I wish they would have like depicted um, more of this stuff the way it was in the book versus the way it ended up being in the movie. They cut out some of the parts with um, Ron and Hermione and made like a more like Harry Potter like fix the whole day or save the whole day and he did save the day to an extent but like 
even the way he ended up with the stone seemed a little different than the book. And so, like I said, overall I really liked it. I think so far I liked this book more than I liked Chamber of Secrets. Chamber of Secrets was still more, it was still entertaining, but I did enjoy Sorcerer's Stone for more. But so far I'm really enjoying The Prisoner of Azkaban and not that much has happened quite yet in the book, so we'll see how it goes. And part of what... Sorry this took so long. At first I was only going to delay it like the one weekend and um, I had some personal stuff going on and that lasted for a couple weeks with some family emergency stuff so I wasn't quite in the mood to film this part of the video. And then um, after that we got, my boyfriend and I have been fishing a lot so I've been spending a lot more time fishing and a little less time reading or making videos so this is what I'm what I've been doing and I'm about to make some fish and I hope you guys are ready for that part of the video all right by the way I give five star rating the Harry Potter I think I've already said that but yeah so this fish that we got we went on vacation and we just got back on Friday. Today's Saturday. We went on vacation to Lake Britain in Bernie, California. And we were... It ended up being kind of a pretty slow week of fishing. And then the last day that we were out there fishing, we ended up catching a decent amount of crappie. And by we, I don't really mean me. I got like four. But my boyfriend and his dad ended up catching quite a bit. And so we're going to be, I'm going to be making that up. And I don't think I'm making all of it because it's a huge bag of fish, guys. <laughs> See, this is a big bag. Probably shouldn't have done that right above my oranges. But I think we're good. It's in a bag. But like I said, I've never cooked fish before. My boyfriend has, and he's freaking amazing at it. So, but I've been wondering how, like, a little bit of orange on some, like, mild tasting fish might end up tasting like. And so, I'm going to try something, and hopefully it works. Because that would suck to ruin some fish. And... My boyfriend also says, like, that it's pretty, pretty hard to ruin crappie, which is mostly what we have. I think there is one, maybe two bluegill in this bag of fish. And right now I'm squeezing the oranges. I'm hoping to make an orange glaze once I finish cooking the fish. But I was zest I already zested some orange. I wasn't going to do that on film. So if I was smart, I'd probably pause this. On the day we drove out to Bernie, I read... And the next day after that, I read a okay amount considering that a good portion of my day wasn't spent reading uh, or two days weren't spent reading and then I didn't read anything after that I didn't listen to audiobook at all I uh, was out fishing for a good portion of the day and then just hanging out with Brandon and his family after that I had a pretty decent time I got a little sunburn, but surprisingly not that bad. And it was only like, it wasn't only in certain parts that I got sunburn. And which is pretty amazing, because like, I am, I don't know how well that's showing up. I guess you can see some of my freckles. I'm pretty pale and fair, guys. So. 
I burn really easily most of the time. So, guys, I started making a cooking video for you guys a while back ago. Brandon had gone out on a day off he had where I had to work. And, um, he ended up catching a legal size California halibut, I want to say it was. Because I think it's the California halibut that was okay to catch and the Pacific halibut at the time was closed off. I think that is open again, but I'm not sure. And so, he caught his first um, halibut of size that was keeper. And he took it home. And it made us two meals and we did fish tacos with them. And we did one with where he sauteed it in butter and grilled some onions and I made some peach salsa and um, serrano, cilantro, and uh, lemon sour cream. And it turned out pretty bomb. And I had tried to film the portion where I made the peach salsa. And I have these camera glasses which I used in my um, thrift and book haul. And so I walked around the thrift store and checked out books and checked out some other stuff in the thrift store and recorded it and made a video out of that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I mean, if you haven't watched it, please go check it out. I think it's a pretty cool video, and well, when we get cooler, the more I try to do it and learn how to use my camera glasses a little better. Actually, don't want to start with that yet. But I think I'm gonna add a little bit of orange peel to the stuff I'm gonna use for the glaze. And I'm just gonna go like this. Hopefully that don't make it taste weird at all. And then I'm going to put some sage pure honey in it from Lolita Farms. Oops. Of course I'd fuck it up. So I'm going to throw in, I think, maybe two tablespoons worth of honey in this. We'll see how it is. I don't want to go too overboard because my boyfriend's diabetic. I think we'll be fine. Maybe I'll do one more. There a little bit of pepper in it. A little bit of salt. Maybe a little bit of ginger. So I use Juice from two oranges, pretty good size oranges, like that. A little bit of zest, a little bit of pepper and salt and ginger, and then three tablespoons of sage honey. I don't think it really matters what kind you get if you want to use it. So I set our little hot plate. We don't have a normal kitchen, guys. So I set our hot plate right on medium, and I'm gonna let it get hot while I season up some fish and decide how much I'm making. 
Alright guys, I got like 12 fillets. I'm going to rinse them off in a second here. Then yeah, you could do a little more. Oh, I guess I'm doing a little more too. Maybe do 14, I don't know. Alright. We'll do 14. So I got 14 fillets. I'm going to rinse them off in a moment here. But before that, I'm going to put the remainder of the fish back outside. And when I say outside, it's in an ice chest. We don't have Brennan. I think we have plenty of ice, but yeah, I'll have him check it out. What, baby? Yeah. So we've been keeping it all nice. I know I started telling you guys something and I trailed off and forgot what I was going to say. But I ramble. I'm pretty good about that. So what I was wanting to tell you guys about earlier when I started rambling off about like making peach salsa for halibut tacos. Uh, I was reading Willa the Wood at the time or I just finished it or something. And I was wanting to tell you guys about that book and how much I wish that it would have been like written for adults. Like, or if there was something similar written for adults. And if there is, please tell me. Because, like, I really did like the book. I didn't give it a five star rating, but it was pretty good. I felt like it kind of had a little slow start. And I kind of had, like, the idea that, like, in my head that there, Willow would have been living with this family. And she would have been living with them for quite a while, you know, before. And that was where most of the, like, drama of the story came from. Where, like, but, um, ended up being that you find, you learn a lot about, like, where she lived and the night people. Which I can't think of their specific names right now because my brain's a little far removed from the book. And you're just not really thinking it out. But, um. Leave this orange peel on more of it. But, um. I really did like it. And really liked it. Had, you know, some inspiration from, like, Cherokee religion. Or... Uh, from Cherokee cultural traditions, I guess, not necessarily religion. Um, and I just found it interesting, and I liked, like, certain, like, stuff that you could get out of it concerning, like, race and minorities and just thinking of people differently. Just, like, in the book, when Willa comes upon the little Cherokee boy in a cage... And, you know, part of her feels compelled to help him, but that, you know, another part of her really doesn't because he's a human and not, not, not her kind, you know, and so she doesn't want to help him and she begrudgingly kind of does a little bit, but she also ends up running away from him and leaves him there and then ends up feeling like she left him to die and... That didn't happen. So I put pepper, orange peel on this so far. I'm going to put some ginger. Some salt. I was thinking about doing basil, but I think I'm going to leave that off. I might put a little bit of lemon pepper instead. But, like, I found some concepts really interesting in that, in the book. And, like, how they got <coughs> tackled for such a young, um, target audience. But I also wanted to see something like that and see a little bit more, like, dark and gritty stuff. And don't get me wrong, some, like, gritty stuff happens in it. But I would have loved to see that in, like, a you know, well done, like, kind of story like that, but with a different target audience in mind.
But if you haven't read Willow of the Wood by the guy that writes the Serafina stories, I want to say his name's Robert Beatty. I've seen people pronounce it Beatty. Check it out. It's pretty good, guys. I'm probably going to give my copy away to someone at work, whoever ends up wanting to take it. But it's a pretty good book. It's worth it. And it says that it's the first book on Goodreads for the thing. So I'll probably pick up the with the series to see where it goes. Because I did like the way it ended and I really did enjoy it. It just wasn't a full five star read for me. And I live in a tiny apartment. I don't have any bookshelves. So, um... I don't want to keep a book. Maybe if it comes down to it and I find myself thinking about the book a lot, I'll end up buying it again in the future. I've totally done that in the past. So, won't be anything new. So, we're going to do this. And do some more. So, if I would have found an actual zester, I ended up using a cheese grater to do this. And I find that cheese girders, and I tried to use my pear knife at first, it was doing the same thing. But the cheese girder just ended up being, I think, a quicker way to do it. When you get an actual zester, I feel like it stays drier than this. Like, this all kind of got, like, clumpy and wet. And I rinsed it off, like, several hours earlier in the day when we got home from buying the oranges. And just ended up with this mess but it should season well I hope I hope this turns out right and doesn't taste gross alright like I said orange peel pepper salt I think I forgot to put lemon pepper on the other side So I asked Brandon earlier how I'll know this is done, and he said that it will turn white. <coughs> Actually, he just told me that I'll know when it's done, or something like that, or cook it till it's done. When I asked him how to cook it, very helpful. And then I asked him how I'd know whether or not it got overcooked, and then he said that when it's done it will turn white. So that's my basis for this. So if it burns, it's his fault. Oh shit. Did you throw butter in the fridge before we left? What? Did you throw the butter in the fridge before we left for vacation? The, on the plate? Yeah. Okay. You haven't touched it yet. I'm throwing butter. I'm going healthy doses with it. And apparently the dose is not serving. <coughs> Listen to that sizzle. I'm going to start dropping some fish in. Wish me luck, guys. I'm gonna put that much in for now. I'm gonna grab another another plate I can set on when it's done. The 
think it might be time to turn it over. I'm not sure. I might have flattened the fan a little bit. Guys, I think this is getting close. Flash might actually be done. At least most of it. And Brandon might have a have a method in using ports when he does this. The shit fucking breaks apart. We might be done. Oops. Well, it's not going to be the prettiest thing because I keep on breaking it. But I think it's done. Probably. I'm not sure it's fine. I think it looks fine. I have two plates instead of one. Not bad. So I kind of mingled the fish, but I think it's all done and turned out right. Other than me breaking it apart. But like I said, my first time making fish, guys. When you do it in butter like that, it tends to. And Brandon said this tends to happen, cooking fish and butter. Make this glaze real quick. And with that, I'm going to use a wooden spoon while I cook it. And I might want to turn the heat down even a little lower. I'd turn it down after the fact, but um, got an electric hot plate, so it takes a while for the cool down stuff. Oops. Hopefully I'll bring this to it might not work that way. Let's see. I need this to come to the boil and then I just turn it off after that. 